Okay, I want to talk about the dangerous places in the Philippines because I've already had some idiot on here today saying it's as safe as any other place. Um, I'd say talking out his backside uh, a minimum. Um, but the fact is, there's certain areas. Zambonga has a history of big problems, of kidnappings and other issues there. Um, the Abbasayev, Ab Abbasayev are quite big in the Sulu Sea area. They, they actually have territories in Mindanao and I recognize some of these areas. The fact is the Philippines government are trying to control these people but there's even special forces there from other countries assisting um, in the Mindanao area. Because what you've got is it's not just Filipinos um, from the Muslim Is Islamic Liberation Front that operate in Mindanao but they also have people coming in from Malaysia and other countries because they struggle to stop them. Um, due to the way the Philippines is set up as a country, um, so many islands um, and limited budget on, its, on controlling the, uh, the sea, seas around the Philippines, there is pretty much freedom of movement for terrorism from other countries to and from the Philippines. You, you can imagine if you're hidden away in the, the jungles of the Philippines or even in some of these cities, nobody's going to really bother you um, because if they don't know who you are, they're not going to be looking for you. So there's a lot of terrorism activity in the Philippines. People don't talk about it. You don't see it as much in the media as it should be. Um, you might see the old thing where a um, kidnappings happen to a foreigner, um, probably one of the biggest stories is probably the Dos Palmas kidnappings uh, with a couple of me married medical missionaries. Uh, well, I'm not sure they're medical, but they were missionaries, uh, resulted in the death of the husband. Um, that was in 2001, where a resort was actually raided and people were kidnapped from the resort. Um, a couple of years, that was a couple of US citizens, the missionaries, um, that sort of thing hasn't happened recently in the media. Now, personally, I don't trust the media. When I read some of the news articles, it's it plays a it fiddles a, a little tune. If you look at Bohol, there's been a couple of radio journalists murdered. If you look at the Mindanao massacre relating to all the, I think it was 34, 36 journalists that got murdered. The fact is, being a journalist in the Philippines is a dangerous job. So they do sway backwards and forwards to stay out of uh, trouble. You hear it on the elections, they'll be running down a politician. And then something happens, whether it's a magic money appeared or something. They're then promoting that same politician they spent all day insulting the day before. That's the Philippines. And as such, it's very um, muddied waters to the numbers of activities going on with the Muslim, uh, Muslim Islamic leaders. MILF, let's just call it MILF. We know <laughs> not the same MILF that, that uh, is famous on the internet for. But the, they also have the NPA. The NPA are very active, not really hearing much in the media unless there's been an ambush. And I remember on Cavit, um, I think it was 16 police were killed in, in one ambush. There's, these things go on on a regular basis, but they're not really talked about. And there's bombings and stuff that <coughs> you can find on YouTube, but you're struggling to find it in a newspaper. That's why I say these places are dangerous. I don't just say it for argument's sake. And I know seasoned travelers may say they're all right. Uh, you know, they'll take the risk. But, but because they're seasoned, they're a bit more um, switched on for it. If you're a tourist, you, you're going to open yourself up to risks um, that they may not doesn't mean they're any smarter than you, it just means they've traveled more. Um, I mean, I've been down to the Yemen border and things before. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a risk unless, it, until it becomes one. 
Um, that's why a lot of these people may have said, well, I was there for two weeks and had no problems. You're right, you didn't. But the problem is when it does go wrong, it ends up with like Iraq or whatever, where you're beheaded on TV. It was so those was that two weeks worth the risk then? The answer would be no. And that's why I say just avoid those areas. You don't need to go the Philippines are huge. There's loads of places to visit that is safe. Um, you don't need to go into these areas where you could actually not make it home. Also, the further you go out, the less uh, medical cover and stuff there is. You know, the hospitals become some shack with a, where you have to bring your own bandages um, and your own book. <laughs> well, would a medical book or a Bible be better? <laughs> you have to question that one. But this is one of the things that is part and parcel of going into remote areas. And that's why even Filipinos will um, often not go to these areas or advise or make excuses to stop you going because they're already aware these places are um, a bit wild west. And you, if you look at Mindanao, people talk about the government troops fighting with the um, MILF, but they rarely or if not at all talk about the Christian militia because there's a there's fighting going on between the three of them so that's why i say don't bother with it just walk, move move aside don't you know you don't need to go there there's plenty of places to visit Davao i would visit but it's like um if you imagine the old fortresses we'd have this big castle in the middle and then this castle safe but when you start heading off into the wilderness it becomes wild west that's a bit like it. Obviously, it hasn't got the big walls and that, but the shopping malls have 80 to 100 guards, and every bank's got two or three guards, and, and that's just Cebu, you know, because the fact is it's not as safe as people assume. It's often um, a bit of a bubble um, because of the amount of armed guards and whatever that surround everybody. Um and people forget that because it becomes so normal that there's a disconnect that those same people are the reason there's less things actively going on around you. But the further you go out, the higher the risk. And one of the things I recommend searching for on YouTube is Journeyman. Search for Journeyman. Some of the videos are quite old, but you'll find a lot of stuff on the Philippines in there that you were probably never seen anywhere else. There's a lot of things on there relating to the mines, with the mining industry, where there's a lot of corruption on who controls the mines, because these mines ain't legally being mined. There's um, things on the um, terrorist groups. There's things on the MPA, because the Philippines government state that the MPA numbers are uh, declining, where the journeyman video up to the last one I've seen is actually saying it's increasing now with with the um, with an economic downturn that affects the poor you will expect with higher poverty for people to be joining militia groups and there's a reason for it if you're part of a militia group you're guaranteed to get fed you got people there that will look after you you got uh, mentoring you know even if it's bad mentoring You've still got somebody that's looking out for you and t making you part of a, a unit. And that's why, personally, this is my personal view, I think the numbers are increasing. Um, nobody really talks about it, because if you mention MPA somewhere, people generally just don't want to talk about it at all. Because um, they do, people do disappear. Um, so, the whole point here is, just be sensible. If you don't need to go to these areas, don't go. Um, it's just not worth it. Simple as that. And you will get people, oh, it's great, it's great. They, I do not understand them. Um, I mean, I can understand some of them have got some of the, they're from there, or whatever. Um, but even if you have a long conversation with them, they'll agree with you at least halfway. Um, because they take it from a local's perspective where we take it from 
the white guy or whatever in a foreign country that is seen as a cash cow. So that's that's where the issue is. All right, thanks for watching.